Time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street with financial expert Rob Black. And Rob, I just pulled up the numbers here a moment ago. Doesn't look too hot. We got the NASDAQ off by more than 200, the Dow off by more than 300 this morning. What are you tracking? Yeah, it's the third day in a row of not hitting record highs. So we're hitting a little lower. We're about 1.5% from all-time highs, so that's not too bad. There's a story from Goldman Sachs that expect the S&P 500 to only grow 3% each year for the next 10 years because we're at such high valuations right now. It's weighing on some people's minds. McDonald's, a Dow component, down 5% today. That's hurting the Dow Jones Industrial Average 30 and the S&P 500. The 10-year Treasury is also at 4.23%, up three, basis, three or four basis points today. And that encourages savers to keep money in cash and get a pretty good interest rate that's beating inflation. And also, existing home sales came in at their lowest level in 14 years, telling you that affordability is still a big problem. And uh, people are holding on to their homes and, and not turning them over in California or the rest of the United States. Yeah, affordability is an issue across all sectors. In fact, I guess Target's going to try and make it a little easier. They're slashing some prices, trying to go head-to-head -head with Walmart ahead of the holiday shopping season, it looks like. Yeah, for the viewers of Cron, that's excellent news. But for the investors in the stock market, it tells you things are a little bit weaker and profits won't be as robust ah. as they uh, are doing promotion. So, yeah, cutting prices on 2,000 uh, issues. Earlier in the year, in spring and summer, they cut prices on 8,000 issues. I think this is kind of important, again, because it's a reminder that um, even though we have jobs and even though we're pretty well doing, you know, um, is on the inflation fight, we're still kind of the lower consumer and the middle consumer still are being a little bit choosier about what they're putting their money into. Fascinating. Okay. All right. Let's get to, you mentioned a moment ago, McDonald's uh, pulling down the Dow just a little bit this morning. Can we dive deeper into that? And, and sure. what exactly is it that's got uh, Wall Street a little sour on the stock this morning? Yeah, not too sour. Um, it's recently moved from about 250 to 300. Now it's down about 7% today, back to the 280 range. Um, so it's not that bad. Um, but one elderly death in Colorado, 49 cases of E. coli, mm. 10 cases requiring hospitalization. Stock's down about 7% today. Competitors, uh, Burger King, who's owned by a company called Quick Service Restaurants, QSR, uh, Wendy's and Taco Bell all doing well today. The stocks are kind of thinking people are going to avoid McDonald's. Uh, now, analysts say that it looks like it's largely contained. And Wendy's back in 2022, their E. coli breakout was largely contained. It's a disease that can get on uh, typically lettuce. In this case, they're thinking maybe minced onions. Um, they're going to get a Department of Justice fine. And that's coming. You know, it, it's automatically coming at this point in time because someone died. But 2015, 2016, Chipotle, it took them five quarters to recover because it took three cases of E. coli breaking out at separate times to really contain it. Um, it looks like McDonald's has contained it, so maybe the stock is a buy. I don't know. That's not my job to tell people what to buy and sell um, to consider, but not mm -hmm. to tell them. But um, it depends because E. coli takes about four weeks to really cook into the people that eat it. Um, so it could be more cases are coming. The numbers can get worse. But for now, it looks like McDonald's has contained it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, also this morning, let's talk a bit about uh, the fact that fewer and fewer high schoolers are making that decision to go on to a four-year college and take on that potential student debt. So that's an interesting trend. Yeah. 5% um, fewer enrollees this year uh, coming up. Um, Ultimately, what that implies is that people are finding the means to pay for it will pay for it. And people who are saying that the price is too high, they're telling their, their kids to go to a, a shorter term certification accreditation. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, new students are down about 5%. Overall, students are up, but that's taking into some people that took off time from COVID and are just getting back to it. Um, tuition for private schools with board is $58,000 a year. That's too much, 58,660. That's not too much. I'm not going to say what people should pay or shouldn't pay. No, nah, that's too much. That's too much. Okay, we could okay. say that. <laughs> that's pretty you do high. Math, and that's over $200,000 for a four year degree. So yeah. the return on investment is what people are coming to. For in state um, public schools, it's 24920 um, per year with room and board included. So rising costs, uh, ballooning student debt are pushing a uh, 7.3% rise in the short-term certification accreditation programs. 
Um, I've got a friend who um, works at a local restaurant and he's a 25 year old kid and he's like, I'm gonna go become an EMT because mm. they need them badly. Sometimes in uh, Alameda, they don't even have enough ambulances to send out. So starting pay there could be anywhere from 100. Uh, if you've been in uh, EMT for a couple of years, you're making 200,000 a year working three or four days a week. So I get why people are saying, you know, college may not be worth it. And there's other jobs, um, dental hygienist, you know, that don't take four year degrees and still pay very, very well. So yeah. it's something I'm gonna encourage my kids to do. Uh, maybe more blue collar like an electrician or a plumber because America will always need those jobs. But yeah. white collar jobs and AI, they, they, they don't mix terribly well, but we'll see. Right. Well, you mentioned AI coding job. I mean, you can, you can learn how to code and become wildly successful without having to go to a college, a four-year college to do that. You can learn a lot of this stuff just online. Hate to break this bubble to you, but coders are, um, are, are no longer wanted or needed. So yeah. AI can do all the coding now. So four years ago, the demand for coders were, was huge. And exactly what you said was right. Uh, companies like Google and Microsoft were paying high schoolers to come out and take short-term programs on learning to code. But coding's uh, AI, is that's making that job like a dodo bird. Yeah, traditional coding, I guess. But they said English is the new programming language. So if you're, if you're oh, yeah. adept at being able to craft these prompts that'll generate these, these bits of code that, cool. the, that the client wants, well, I guess that's the new frontier. All you need is English these days. I'm picking out what you're putting down. I love it. All right, Rob, thank you as always. And we're going to chat with Rob again tomorrow. So there you have his contact information at the bottom of the screen. Reach out. He's a very friendly guy, as you can see. Email him directly, too, at rob at robblack.com.